everyone, my name is Mark DeYoung, and in this video we are going to continue to explore the history of the trombone in jazz. In part one, we checked out Kid Ori and Jack Teagarden. In this video, we dive into the contributions of a trombonist who completely changed the sound parameters of what was possible on the instrument. His influence was such that he also had an impact on the possibilities of sound by jazz trumpet players. The player I'm speaking of is Joe Tricky Sam Nanton. Nanton was born in 1904 in New York City, and while there is little available information about his childhood, his contemporaries refer to his vast knowledge of numerous subjects and interests. He owned a vast library of books and was conversant in science, history, philosophy, and even Shakespeare. Musically, one of his earliest professional inspirations came from New York trumpeter Johnny Dunn in 1921, who was known to use a plunger to create vocalized sounds. Nanton's early attempts were unsuccessful by his own account, as they caused the pitch to go sharp, but Nanton spent the next several years developing his technique to include hummed notes that created multiphonics, flutter tongue, and various vowel shapes. His first working engagements took place in Washington, D.C., with bands led by Elmer Snowden and Cliff Jackson. His earliest recordings included King of the Zulus with the New Orleans Blue Five and PDQ Blues with Thomas Morris and his Seven Hot Babies. In 1926, Nanton replaced Charles Irvis in the Duke Ellington Orchestra, and along with trumpeter Bubber Miley, would soon become an integral part of what was dubbed Ellington's Jungle Sound. Nanton received his nickname Tricky Sam from Ellington clarinetist Otto Hardwick because of his unique vocalizing techniques on the trombone. Nanton and Miley would play off of each other's abilities to talk through their instruments and were a popular feature of many early Ellington compositions like East St. Louis Toodaloo and Black and Tan Fantasy. After Miley left Ellington in 1929, Nanton would coach the young trumpeter Cootie Williams on some of the techniques that Miley had used. Yet he also saved some technique secrets from everyone else in the band. We do know that his distinctive yaw-yaw effect was created in part through the combination of growling while using a Magosi and Boucher trumpet straight mute. Other Ellington recordings that feature his creative vocalized sounds include The Mooch and Mood Indigo. Nanton would remain an integral part of the Ellington Sound until July 20th, 1946, while on tour with the Ellington Band, he suffered a stroke and he died that day. In addition to the numerous recordings where you can hear Nanton in action, there is terrific video footage of Nanton doing his yaw-yaw -ya effect as they play It Don't Mean a Thing If It Ain't Got That Swing, recorded in 1943. Ellington trombonists that would list Tricky Sam as a direct influence include Tyree Glenn and Quentin Butter Jackson, as well as more contemporary trombonists such as Steve Teray, Ed Neumeister, Ray Anderson, Wycliffe Gordon, and others. Once again, we are joined by Calgary trombonist Karsten Rubling, who is going to demonstrate some of the vocalizing effects pioneered by Nanton on the tune Lover Man. Check out the harmonic effects he uses right at the end of the tune. Here is Lover Man. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 